Hey guys, it's Connor and welcome back to my channel, The Closet. So today I'm going to be doing a video on my opinion on Purse on Fleek's recent video that she posted last week about her, um, why she will never be shopping at Hermes Sydney again. And um, I feel like that video was very controversial and it's definitely not something I had ever seen um, happen in this kind of YouTubing influencer space where it garnered such a big response where there was forums trending the topic, people had done videos on it, everybody was commenting it on the Facebook groups and it was definitely not something I had seen, at least not for a very long time, on a topic where everyone had an opinion on it. Now since that video was posted last week, I think it got up to like 35,000 views or something in a few days, but Mel has now taken the video down, I believe, um, since the last time I checked. But the reason why I wanted to do a response video to it was because I've never been asked so many, but so I've never been asked by so many people about what my opinion is on a YouTube video ever. And I don't, I didn't really want to make a video because I didn't want to say the wrong thing or come across as saying the wrong thing. But I feel like as long as the opinion is constructive, I feel like, you know, it's all good. <laughs> that's, that's what I'm aiming for anyways. So first and foremost, um, I just wanted to say that Mel and I are actually friends. Um, I've known her for a few years now. We've met up a few times when I used to live in Sydney and she really is a, a really nice girl. She's definitely somebody who is incredibly passionate about the luxe world, definitely passionate about Hermes and she isn't somebody who is malicious or anything like that. And I feel like a lot of the comments that were being made with regards to her video really steered away from the actual facts or the narrative that the video was focusing on. And it went on a complete tangent attacking her personally. Um, and I don't think that that is appropriate. And I don't think that's something that she warrants for posting a video about a certain topic. I feel like people are entitled to their opinion on the content of the video. They're entitled to their opinion on the way she went about things in the video. But anything other than that is totally unnecessary. And that was something that I really felt for Mel. And a lot of us did reach out to Mel because the comments that we were all reading were really quite hurtful. And I don't think anybody should be subjected to those kind of comments. But moving, putting that aside, I should say, the video content that Mel had talked about um, the, was quite detailed. And when I, I think the video went for about an hour or just under an hour. And it basically talked about her journey that she had with Hermes, um, the interaction she had. She had multiple essays. She'd spent X amount of dollars and then felt a bit let down when that essay would leave. So then she had to build up that rapport with another essay and then that essay would leave. So for somebody who is very passionate about shopping at Hermes and luxury and all those kinds of things, it is a bit of a kick to the guts when you feel like you've, you know, made momentum with a person at a boutique and then they've left and you feel like, okay, well, I've got to start all over again. And because that had happened to Mel so many times, I feel like she was getting to a bit of a breaking point with, with regards to that. And I do understand that, especially when there are shoppers who go into Hermes, drop X amount of dollars in one sitting, don't really care about the brand. They just want it for the status or whatever it may be. And then they just get a bag. So I do see it from that perspective, a hundred percent. I feel like Mel had interactions within, with the essay via email um, that were a bit lengthy in my opinion. And I feel like when you want something from Hermes, you can't have a broad range of um, selections, whether it be for a Burke and Kelly Constance or even wallets, bracelets, anything. I feel like you've got to be very precise. You've, you've got to tell them, this is what I want. I want it in either this color or that color and that's it. And if you just keep hounding, hounding, hounding with lots of different items, it can become overwhelming. I will admit that when I saw some of the emails that Mel wrote, I was overwhelmed. I was like, oh my God, that is so much writing. And I could just picture if I was at work, whether it be for Hermes or just my current job, if I got an email like that, I would be a bit like, huh. but in saying that, I'm not sure what the standard of email that a normal Hermes essay would get. So I don't know if that's the norm, but personally, I, if I got an email like that at work or something, I'd have a heart attack. But, you know, each to their own, I guess. 
It is a, I do find it a bit strange with Hermes though, like you're shelling out money to buy something because you want to buy it and you love it, but you almost have to do a bit of the work yourself. Like you've got to settle for things and you've got to take it or leave it. And you're like, okay, I'm not even buying something that's that elusive. I'm buying a bracelet, but they've got three colors and none of them are what I want, but it's kind of like, I've just got to take it. And I, that's the name of the game at the end of the day. It's not for the weak hearted. It's not for the, you know, the savvy buyers. If you want something from Hermes specifically, whether it be a bag, a bracelet, shop in the pre-love market. I would not recommend having your heart set on something that is hard to get, comes up occasionally, or any of those things. I would say shop pre-love because you will be heartbroken. You're going to be let down. You're going to be chasing your tail and then you'll see somebody else get the thing you want and you'll just be like, what the hell? That is what I wanted. Like how? So to save yourself that heartache, I would just not even do it. I would not play the game. I would not shell out money, whether you want the items or not. At the end of the day, I would just go pre-loved. It's a lot safer <laughs> and, you know, it'll mend that broken heart before it happens. In saying that, there are people who choose to play the game. There are people who choose to go into the boutique, buy, 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 and it works for them. They get a bag or it doesn't work for them. In the case of Mel, like video about how she was had spent, I think, correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe she said after that period of time, it was like up to $27,000. That's a lot of money to have spent to not being offered a bag. And whilst I believe that no one is entitled to getting a bag um, just for shopping at Hermes and there's no rule about spend, there is no link buying like Mel refers to in her video about, you know, if you spend X amount, you'll be offered this. There's none of that, but I feel like there's precedence to back up if you spend X amount of dollars on something, generally you will receive a bag. I don't know the exact relationship that Mel had with her essay, but from the emails and from the responses and from what Mel had said, I personally think that they were just on different pages. And I think that Mel has misunderstood the professionalism of the essay or the manner in which she chooses to communicate as a closer relationship maybe i'm not sure but i do feel like there was a miscommunication and i feel like both of them had the right intentions but i feel like there was just that disconnect and that's why they just weren't on the same page i feel like maybe the essay just thought that mel was after a variety of different things and wasn't too fast or i'm not sure but i feel like once it got to that point at the end where um you know somebody else had gotten the the um, Rosa Kura Birkin, I feel like that's just when it all came to a blow and the essay was just like, nah, I'm out. This is too much. I think that, oh, what do I say? I feel like picking an essay is a hard thing and I feel like it's, you don't have to connect personally. I don't expect an essay to, you know, know about your personal life, but I feel like the essay should know what your style is, what your preferences are, what kind of thing you're into after a few months of shopping there. And you shouldn't have to keep telling them, this is what I want. This is what I want. This is what I want. Um, I feel like in the video too, Mel said, I've got, you know, an anniversary coming up. I've got a birthday. And whilst people attacked that aspect of it saying you shouldn't you know, blackmail the essay with a birthday or a celebration. We all know in the Hermes world that that's like, like the heartstring thing. Like a lot of people do that. They send their husbands in say, oh, it's my wife's anniversary or it's my girlfriend's this and it's my sister's brother's dog's cousin's that. Like that is not a big shocker thing that she did. Everybody does that, you know, putting under the husband's name, getting him to go in and I'm surprising my wife, blah, blah, blah. So the fact that people reacted so strongly to that part, I was like, what? That's, that wasn't even a big deal. That's just like common practice in the Hermes world. But I feel like the main, um, the main uproar from her video was the self, the sense of entitlement. And I don't, Mel's not an entitled person. And I don't think she meant to say, I'm entitled to this bag, like you owe it to me, but it did come across like that in the video. But I feel like she felt a bit jaded from the whole experience with it. And I get it. I get it. I don't, I, I feel like 
she, the way she communicated her message wasn't how she would have if you were having a conversation. And I feel like she filmed the video either on the day or a few days after the incident with the Hermes HR person happened. And I probably would have waited to cool down and then gave a more, um, you know, from both sides perspective of that. That's personally what I would have done in that situation. A lot of people too have opinions about, you know, it's not that hard to get a bag. This is what you should do. This is what that should do. Blah, 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 blah. But the videos on YouTube predominantly talking about how to get a bag from Hermes. Every store operates differently, especially in Australia. We do not have, you know, an abundant amount of Hermes stores. We have, I think we've got one in Sydney. Then there's one at the airport in Sydney, but that doesn't count. There's two in Melbourne, one at Chadston, one on Collins Street. Then there's one on the Gold Coast at Pack Fair, and then there's the store in Brisbane. And that's all we have. So geographically, they're quite spread out. And if you, the whole of New South Wales has the one store in Sydney. So Sydney, you know, has what, 7 million people for one Hermes boutique, and that's it. So it is incredibly competitive. There is money there like you would not believe. And you, there's no cookie cutter way to get an Hermes bag. And it like, you can't say that in America or in Europe or in this store or blah, blah, blah. It should be easy because the Sydney store is probably in a league of its own. It's just so hard. And the money that pours in there, you know, it's unbelievable. So when you're seeing constantly on social media, people are getting bags when they, you know that they have not shopped there for that long, you know they have not spent this amount of money I would be like, where's my bag? But in saying that, it's almost like buying lottery tickets, expecting to win, expecting to win, and you spent, you know, $10,000 on a lottery ticket. And you're like, how come I haven't won yet? Like some people just buy one lottery ticket and then they win straight away. So how come I haven't won? It's that same kind of mentality. And I feel like, you know, you know, like the odds are not stacked in your favor a lot of the time. So just because you've spent X amount of dollars, it doesn't necessarily mean you're going to win. The goalposts will change and Hermes will give a bag to a stranger who walks in with no purchase history or they won't give a bag to somebody who has five years of a purchase history. That is the whole point of their business model. If everybody knew that, you know, you spent $20,000, you get a bag, and then if you spend $40,000, you get your second bag, everybody would have one. So that's the whole point. It's about creating that elusiveness, you know, keeping those goalposts in and out, in and out, so nobody really knows. There is, um, what's the word? A lot of, um, what's the word? A lot of like speculation, I guess, around items that essays may receive a commission on, like homewares, watches, fine jewellery. Um, these are items that you probably should spend your money on because, you know, they're low cost to make, but they have a high profit margin in the store. So that's why the essays are given commission. And this is not just exclusive to Hermes. This is Dior, Louis Vuitton, all of those high-end brands. Fine jewellery, of course, has a high markup and a low cost. It's because if you were to pull apart the elements of that jewellery, it won't equate to the $10,000 that it is retailing for. Of course not. So that is why, you know, essays want you know, or they hint towards watches or they hint towards pillows and all those sorts of things. In From what Mel was saying she had purchased, I couldn't see those high commission items personally. All I could see was SLGs, um, occasionally shoes, occasionally some ready to wear, but it was mainly like leather bracelets. And, you know, I didn't see those high commission items. Maybe that was a factor as to why she didn't receive a bag because she wasn't buying stuff that ticked the boxes. Of course, this is speculation and it's not the roadmap, but that's my guess, my educated guess. <laughs> <laughs> Lastly, you know, the general kind of comment that I did see that came up a lot was Mel has a YouTube channel, a very successful YouTube channel. She has heaps of subscribers. Her videos garner heaps of views, but maybe that was hindering Hermes's um, decision-making process with regards to giving her a bag. Maybe they didn't want her talking about how she went with her essay, the process she took. Maybe they didn't want that whole 
you know, process exposed on her channel. And I can guarantee you with every inch of my life that her SA, the store manager, and all the other essays in that store are aware that she has a YouTube channel. They probably even watch it, maybe not at work, but <laughs> you know, when they get home, they are aware of it, whether they found it themselves, whether another client has gone in and told them and said, Mel's talking about this or that bag you gave Mel, she sold, whatever it may be. So they are probably not inclined to give her a bag because they're like, why would we give it back to somebody that could potentially be sold in six months or whatever? Of course, Mel is well within her rights to sell a bag that she owns, that she's purchased, whether it be from Hermes or wherever. That's her decision. But you can, you have to be able to see it from the perspective of Hermes as well. You know, there's people who would do anything for a bag who will keep it forever versus somebody who could potentially resell it six months later. So, you know, you've got to factor that into the equation because I, if I was a store manager of a store and I'd seen her channel, I would have the same, I would have the same opinion. They might, you know, Hermes is famous for being secretive. Everything is hush, hush. There's all smoke and mirrors and all of that. So probably somebody who shops so frequently in the store and has such a huge platform, they probably don't want to align themselves with that. I'm not saying that Mel is not the ideal Hermes shopper in any way, shape or form, because there are people who shop at Hermes who look homeless, but have all the money in the world. So that perception is totally not what I'm talking about, but I'm talking about they want the client who does not post on social media. They want the client who, you know, is just understated. And I, I personally believe that if you do have a huge social media following and you're consistently uploading bags and talking about tips and things like that, Hermes will misalign themselves with that. Like they just won't do it. So you have to take that into consideration as well. Is it wrong to have a YouTube channel and talk about those things? No, Mel has helped heaps of people with her, you know, advice and stuff on bags, but you've got to kind of pick a lane, I guess, because ultimately this is what has happened with, with Hermes and her relationship there. So hopefully that covers my views and opinions on the video that she posted. And you know, guys, at the end of the day, Mel's actually a really lovely person. She did not warrant the amount of bullying comments, comments about her personal appearance, you know, all those ridiculous comments about her that was not warranted from that video. I feel like YouTubers are not just open slather for, you know, personal attacks. Keep it focused on the topic. Raise your argument, not your voice is what I say to that. But I hope I'm actually kind of excited to see what direction Mel's going to now take because, you know, she's not going to be shopping in that boutique anymore while she lives in Sydney. So while I think she will take a big learning from that video and I feel like she will grow from that. Um, and I'm not sure why she deleted the video possibly because of all the, you know, the trolling on it. But I think that I would have personally left the video up because you know, that's, that's her truth and that's what's happened moving forward. Hopefully, you know, the future looks good for that. But thank you so much, guys, for watching my video. Please write your opinions and views down in the comments. If you have any comments or questions for me, free, ugh, I can never say this. <laughs> feel free to reach out, God. And um, I'll see you next time.